lot of YouTube tutorials out there on scarves and fun ways to wear scarves, but frankly, they're all pretty boring and pretty basic. We've all seen the same 13 ways to tie a scarf. So what we're gonna do today is present new and different ways of, of using your scarves. I have a large scarf collection. This is one of them. This is a fun one. Um, it's got a lot of different colors on it. It can be professional, it can be unprofessional. Now, as you'll know, this is just a normal scarf. It's not an infinity scarf, right? Which is all the rage now. What you do is you take this and you're gonna make a half Windsor bow knot on the end. You're just gonna take that. That's gonna make a big loop, right? It looks like a Cheerio. You're gonna put that on the back of your head where people are least likely to see it. Because if you have it hanging out in front, people are just gonna be staring at that. That's gonna be kind of right here in the navel area. It's no good. That's not where you want people looking. You're gonna cross the scarf over like this and you're gonna note this scarf is way too small, right? And so what you're gonna think is you're gonna put it over your head, but again, it's too small. It's gonna get caught on your head right about here. And that's what we're doing with this scarf, is we're just going to have it caught. And now it's kind of a fun accessory. It covers the back of your head. Or, spooky times Halloween, we're covering the front. Ooh, it's a Dementor. You're going to want a different color if you're going to go for the Dementor look, because obviously Harry Potter, they weren't rainbow colored. But nonetheless, it's a good option for that. What we want is, is, is just a, a nice scarf like this. I don't have an orange scarf. This is best if you have an orange scarf. What you're gonna do, right behind the neck, just like you're putting on a scarf, you're gonna tuck that through your belt, okay? Just tuck that right through your belt. And this is gonna do two things for you. One, it's gonna make it look like you have a permanent life vest on, okay? Especially if you flare out the sides a little bit. Just flare those out. Just get them right flared out. And then, every time someone comes into your office or if you're studying somewhere and they startle you, you're going to give yourself a little bit of a wedgie and it's going to help kind of give you a little bit more energy throughout the day. So what will happen is you're sitting there typing and somebody comes in and you're like, what? And it's like, woo, it just pulls right up. It looks super weird. But again, that's why you choose a color that is more like a life jacket. And then it looks more like you just had a fun day on a boat and you just come from that and people are going to be like, oh my god, what was what were you doing on the boat? And you're like, oh, I don't want to talk about it, but I was at the lake. So this is a real infinity scarf, okay? Now what we're going to do is what I like to call the Chewbacca. Now I know what you're thinking. Am I going to take this, make it brown, be all hairy and weird? No. You're just going to wear it like a bandolier or like a pageant winner. And so if you have material that you can put pageant winner across or first place, do it. Do it. Here's the thing. When you wear a scarf, you're saying fashion accessory, but you can also be saying, hey, look at me. I remember how before you just came off a boat, you just came out of a competition and you're so busy, you didn't have time to take it off. And people are going to be wondering, what did you get first place in? Why do you have this sash? The next thing we're going to do is you're going to take an infinity scarf. And you're going to kind of hook it through your thumbs like this, okay? And you're gonna you're gonna pull it a little bit tight you're gonna take your pinky loop it under like this okay so now you have your thumb through pinky through okay twist catch the elbow like this with your hand bend over okay and then you don't do exactly what I did, I'm going to need to be cut out of this. I'm going to get a knife. Oh, God. Oh. This is a fun one. People think of scarves as fashion accessories. What, what people don't realize is scarves are great travel accessories. When you go traveling and you have, you can, you're only limited to one carry-on now or whatever it is, remember, a scarf is so versatile. You can do almost anything with a scarf. So let's say you're going off to France, ooh la la, Paris, and you want to throw a fun party, or as they say it in their language, a fiesta. Now, you don't have anything with you. There's a, there's a technique where it's literally about making 
the fibers of the fabric work for you. And that is going to be important for almost all the advanced techniques we have. It's a technique that you don't see a lot in this country anymore, but is really popular in Bolivia these days. You want to take your hands, and hopefully you don't have big sausage fingers like I do. Hopefully you have kind of petite, delicate fingers. And hopefully you don't have bird bones, because bird bones, it's going to be hard to do it with bird bones, but you're going to go, <sighs> if you don't have hot breath because you're a, a vampire or you don't have warm blood, put your hands over a heater or boil some water and hold your hands over the steam. And you're just going to get those hands hot. Okay, not too hot. Don't actually put your hands in boiling water. Just over the steam is fine. Don't get a steam burn. And we're gonna do the same thing to the scarf. Just nice and hot. You're going to be pulling at the fibers and you're not gonna pull so hard as to tear the fibers, but you're going to pull them and mold the fibers. You may have to, you may not be, have a whole lot of upper body strength, which I do not. You may have to use your lower body strength, i.e. your legs. If you don't have multiple legs, it still works with just one leg. You are going to put your foot down on the fabric, and I know this is out of the shot, but the other end of this, you're gonna put your foot on it, and you're gonna pull, and you're just, you're gonna, you're gonna shape with your hands. That's the most important thing, is shaping with your hands, okay? So you're shaping and you're pulling, again, using your foot for leverage, just shaping and pulling, and just really getting those fibers where you want them to be. Well, don't you know it? What do we have now? We have a bowl that we can put all sorts of fun food in, just from a scarf that you were wearing around your neck. This is all you have to pack. And now you can put croissants or French breads or cheeses right in this bowl, and people can eat from it. And that's just from your simple scarf. Again, you need hot or warm hands, and you need to make the fibers work for you, mold those fibers, okay? You're lonely, and trust me, we've all been there. You're lonely and you want a companion, okay? What you're gonna do is a similar technique. Now my hands are still warm from the, from the prior, but I'll just, for demonstration purposes, we're gonna get those warm, you're gonna take a scarf. This one is a very long scarf and it's generally better if you have a lot of material because we're going to make yourself a little friend with this. So the more material you have, the better. Take the material, this you can see scarf long, you're going to fold it over once, twice, okay, until it's just kind of a bunch of material, okay. Now again, we're molding with our feet and so we're using those that lower body strength. If I had better upper body strength, I would do it up here, but I have to do it down there. But again, it's molding, molding those fibers. So, oh, and look at that. Look at that. We have ourselves a little friend just from a simple scarf. Now the downside is you're now going to have to feed this animal. It will remain a pet uh, forever until the pet passes away. But, you now have a friend. So be very careful in how often you do this because you don't want to end up as one of those crazy pet people who've just made pets out of scars for your whole life. But as you can see, the results are pretty good. Um, depending on the scarf size you select, you may end up with more body than you were hoping for. But again, if you, end up, if you do too small, you're just gonna end up with a chihuahua and no one wants that. So scarf size is fine and just this is what you're going to end up with if you mold those fibers. Bye, little guy. What is this? This is what you are going to be wearing to your next party. Now, do you see this? See this? These are leg holes. These are shorts. You can wear these as shorts. Now the downside is they do only come up to the groin and stop. You'll have to be wearing um, like a longer dress or if you're a man, like a, a sport coat with the buttons buttoned. 
Uh, and remember, with a sport coat, always, sometimes, never. So have that top one buttoned and the second one because you're going to want to keep the area covered. But it's a very simple thing to do. Fold over, tie the ends, bring back out, leg holes, and that's what you can wear to your fancy French party with your new best friend pet. These are things you can do with a scarf. These are advanced techniques, not the boring ones that you can find elsewhere on YouTube. And I hope you have a good time. Mm. Getting it undone, however, is, is really a lot of stray, strays on this one. This one is well used. I used to wear this almost daily until someone called me out for it on Twitter and I had to stop wearing it. But it's, it's well loved. Um, and it was, it was during a period of time when I couldn't afford an infinity scarf, so I had to kind of improvise with that, what, what you just saw. Now it's just hanging, just loose, just, I may have destroyed it. <laughs> so we'll, we'll set that one aside for the moment.